Good morning, everyone. Happy Tuesday. Today for Read Aloud, we read Just Like Ruby Goldberg, The Incredible True Story of the Man Behind the Machines. Hmm, any thoughts on what Ruby Goldberg might have invented? Type of machine? Question, how do you become a successful award-winning artist, a famous inventor, without ever inventing anything at all? This is not a trick question. A man named Ruby Goldberg did it. In a funny way, his life was just like one of his famous inventions, an improbable and inefficient chain reaction that ends up making perfect sense. From the time he was a boy, Ruby Goldberg loved to draw. We're not just talking about simple stuff here. As early as four years old, Ruby traced cartoons he found in books. At 11, he took official art classes from a sign painter. Ruby might have been a quiet boy. He might have been shy, but he was determined to be a great cartoonist for a big time newspaper. Unfortunately, when he told his family, they were absolutely horrified. Beyond dismayed, Ruby's father, Max, had immigrated from Germany to America to give his family a chance for a better life. He didn't want his son to end up as a beggar on streets. So to please his father, Ruby went to the University of California in Berkeley studied engineering, and after graduation got a job with the city of San Francisco Department of Water and Sewers. It was a good job. It paid well. That could have been the end of the story, right? Wrong. Ruby detested shoveling tunnels in mines 2,000 feet underground. He did not enjoy mapping seven pipes either, sewer pipes and he wasn't very impressed with the city's government. Ruby still wanted to draw comics for a big time newspaper. So after six months, he quit engineering and started over. He got a job at the San Francisco Chronicle. For $8 a week, Ruby emptied waste baskets, cleaned the floors and filed photographs in the document morgue. And whenever he had a chance, Ruby drew and drew and drew. Day after day, Ruby submitted his cartoons to the editor. Night after night, the editor mostly said no. When he said yes, Ruby sometimes got paid, but other times he just got out of the office tasks he didn't like to do. After a year, Ruby convinced the sports department of the San Francisco Bulletin to hire him and after that, he was a little more successful. He developed his style. The paper ran his cartoons and a column too. This might have been the next end of the story, but then the ground shook, literally. Hmm, what might have caused the ground to shake? The 1906 earthquake in San Francisco crumbled the city and left many people without jobs and homes. In the wake of disaster, it can be hard for people to focus on their dreams. It can be even harder to feel hopeful. But Ruby didn't give up on his dream. Instead, the only thing he could do, he did. He drew comics to cheer people up. And then he made a big decision. In 1906, there was only one place where a guy like Ruby could really make it big. It was the place he called the front row, the cartoon capital of the country, New York City. So he got on a train and headed east. He didn't have much, $200 and a diamond ring. The ring was a gift from his father, just in case Ruby needed to sell it to buy a ticket back home. After 12 days of pounding the pavement, lugging his art from newspaper to newspaper, Ruby did it. He got a job as a cartoonist at a big time paper the New York Evening Mail. He made it.
Right off the bat, Ruby became a celebrity. Readers couldn't wait to see what he had to say about all kinds of things. Like sports and politics and the silliness of everyday life. But maybe more than anything else, everyone loved reading about Ruby's alter ego, Professor Lucifer Gorgonzola Butts. The eccentric professor, prof this eccentric professor invented one intricate machine after another, and none of them were straightforward. In fact, they were the opposite of straightforward and often disregarded the laws of physics. Although this was the age when new machines were being invented to make life easier, Ruby's screwball contraptions purposefully solved problems in the most surreal and ridiculous ways. Things like, how do you put holes in donuts? Or, how do you turn off a light? Or, even, how do you cut your own hair? Just like the machines he studied in engineering school, these complicated contraptions required lots and lots of parts, and they always worked, on paper anyway. They weren't practical in the real world, but that was never the point. Ruby Goldberg didn't draw machines that solved real world problems. He drew comics to make us look closer, and question logic and tickle the imagination. And because of that, these machines accomplished something astounding and more important than any pile of nuts and bolts ever could. They challenged people to use the most amazing machine in the universe. Ooh, what do you think the most amazing machine in the universe is? The brain. So let's take it from the top. Ruby Goldberg became a stubborn, smart, serious about being funny engineer, office boy, cartoonist, commentator, comic genius, and award-winning artist and inventor whose name is now an adjective in the actual dictionary without inventing a thing. Is this kind of thing still possible? You bet it is. Figure out what you want, work as hard as you can, and most of all, have a great time getting there. just like Ruby Goldberg. Honk, honk. I hope you enjoyed our story and have a terrific Tuesday.